My name is Davin Sturdivant, and in this video we'll be looking at how to build a track map in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for Aimsport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. Okay, so Roger, sometimes when I come back from a race or a session, um, I'm trying to find my track map, but the function's not working. Why is that? Yeah, when you first download data from a from your from your session, there is a we really have two different ways of looking at you know what happened, where are you on the track, and and why it happened, which is our three main things that we're going to really try to cover, you know, in a, in a lot of these data analysis sessions. And um, the where you're at is is a, is a function of having to generate a track map. We have the the GPS driven line map which you can pop up and bring up you know real quickly but the we also have a track map that you can build and then break into segments so we can do some some cool split reports some things we're going to talk about in other videos but the uh, the building of a track map is the first step that I think we ought to talk about and then show you also where we can take a look at the GPS map so you know we're here in the in race studio analysis where you've downloaded data and uh, so we're going to just open one of these tests just by highlighting it and double clicking on it you know the, the test will open right and and here you are and there's just a bunch of squiggly lines right so it, when you when you come along here and you and you and we put our cursor up here on this back straightaway it, we can tell it's a back straightaway because there's a, a large acceleration zone in the speed trace here on the top but but where on the track is that we really don't know, right? And that, and that's a real helpful tool. So, the the and and as you mentioned, there's a, there's some icons up here in the upper corners, like, like this split time analysis. It's grayed out. Mm. There's nothing there. We can't we can't click on it. Over here on the right side, upper right hand corner, there's a track map show track map icon. Mm. It's grayed out as well. We have to build that track map the very first time when we uh, when we download the data, mm. and it's really quite simple. The uh, once you've got your data here, you have to have a couple of things. You have to have some sort of a speed sensor because it's rollout distance what we're going to look at. We're, we're converting rollout distance back to – I'm sorry, we're converting speed back to rollout distance so we know where, how far since the start-finish line. And so you need a speed trace. And you need to have you know, a, you know GPS or a lateral G sensor so we know where the corners are. Uh, if you have a GPS sensor on your cart, you, that's all here for us. So, the, And the way that we build the track map is you simply come up to the map pull-down menu – map and new so that's pretty you know pretty self-explanatory map new and then a dialog box will open mm. and this dialog box we're not going to go into the step-by-step -step of this dialog box for this video but there uh, there are a couple of videos out on the aim learn fast youtube site there's a track map basic and there's a track map advanced that goes into every literally every you know every piece of this dialog box and what each one of these things do so if you want a little bit more information go to go do a search for uh, track maps and but uh, for this one here, you, it, it, it automatically selects, when you, when you open up this function, it automatically selects, selects the best lap, which in this case was a 112.318, it's highlighted. We could select other ones, but it automatically highlights the fastest lap, and it draws a, you know, mathematically calculates and draws a, a picture of what the track looks like. And then this is a very good representation of uh, the PGP track. And, um, and what we need to do in order to save this it is drawn it is sitting there just waiting for us you have to come down to the file name and you have to type in a, a name for it now this this name that we're going to give it here is uh, you can only have one of these on your computer so if if you're going to go back to pgp every month or if you're going to do a heat race or something you need to give it a unique file name mm. so in this case i'm going to i am going to call it pgp and we're going to call it uh, july you know uh, heat race Right, mm -hmm. what, whatever it is, something that means something to you, mm -hmm. it, it is forever going to be attached to this test, so you don't ever have to go re-grab it again. And next time you open this test a month from now, this track map will, you know, whatever your last track map you have a, uh, attached to it, will automatically show. So you don't have to go do it all the time, but it's it's good to have a different name with Makes it. Makes sense. So, and I like to just leave it at the defaults, at least for a while. You can come in here and remove some of these splits or add some splits. There's a lot of splits here on this particular one. But, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and click on, uh, click on the OK button after giving it a name. 
And you'll notice one big change that happened really quickly and a, and a couple of smaller ones. The big one is all those segments we just did are showing in the colored bar across the top. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, it's, it's greens are the straightaways, green, green equals go, right? Okay. And reds are rights and, 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 and blues are lefts. Yeah. You know, that, that's more or less the way that the, the track maps are by default uh, colorized. And then you'll also notice that uh, in, across the, you know, some of those icons that we couldn't see before are now active. There are three or four icons, uh, split time analysis being the, the most popular uh, icon that you function that you can't use until you have built a track map. So, so now we can come over here to the right side and we can go up to the secondary icon toolbar and we can click on shift F1 or show track map. And it will uh, and it will give you this big floating track map. Mm. And, and you can put this thing anywhere you want to. You can grab the corners of it and you can resize it. And uh, you know, often we'll take this thing and we'll put her down here into the to the bottom corner, and uh, and then re you know grab the bring, grab the corner if I can get it there it is grab the corner and you can resize it down you know kind of hidden away down in here, and uh, and then you turn it back off and on anytime you want just by coming up to the icon again, you can turn it off turn it back on, and now wherever I put my cursor I'm going to bring it up here a little right in the middle of the screen so we can see it really well, but wherever I move. The, the cursor in the data, in the data traces over here, mm -hmm. like there's the end of that straightaway that we were looking at before. Well, that is right here. You can see that the, there's a cursor running along inside of the, right. inside of the track map right. as well. We can make that just a little bit bigger so everybody can see it well. You can also then click in this map, since it's all dynamically linked, I can just click there in the middle of that corner at the apex of this, this uh, right-hand corner here, and it is... You know, right here, as the, this is the breaking zone into that particular corner. So track maps are extremely handy. They're easy to build, very quick, very easy. You can then resize this thing, poke it away down here into the corner, and uh, and then be able to you know study your data at, and 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 know exactly where you are on the track just by following along. So uh, again, very handy. You can turn it off and on anytime you want. You get it in and out of the way if you want to, and uh, and and see exactly where you are. So that's a calculated track map now, and that's a and that's a that's a very cool tool, and it shows you exactly where it is. But you have to think of that one as it's not telling you where you are left and right on the track, but just rather how far since the straightaway and and in the middle of this particular corner. And that's that's handy. But there, you, if we bring the GPS track map up. It actually makes it even clearer. You can actually look at your driven line, mm -hmm. what, it, what we call the driven line GPS map. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually already have the GPS open, and uh, we can just kind of zoom out a little bit. And uh, there's a picture of the GPS driven line map. The, uh, the the track map that we built is rotated a little bit. This is truly GPS coordinates, so north is always up when you're looking at this, right. unless you want to rotate right. it. But but uh, and this one here it kind of does a it does a best fit. Mm -hmm. So while uh, they are virtually the same, one one does have a little bit of a rotation to it. And uh, so this is the GPS map. So I can actually resize that, you know, down and uh, and now we can have our GPS map open. And we again now we're clicking in the in the um, in the regular data file, right. and you can see in the GPS map right here, right. it's entering that right-hand corner, right. and down on the other map, it's entering that right-hand corner. So they're all three now, including the fourth piece, which is our our measures and laps toolbar values. Right. Everything is dynamically linked, which makes everything uh, extremely powerful to be able to look at and know what exactly what's happening. Uh, that so. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I think this is also really useful too when you're trying to uh, get specific on a particular corner, because um, everyone has like that nemesis corner where you're like, you know, I people run away from me here, or I still haven't figured it out, or it scares me, or whatever, right? And so being able to just kind of see it on the map. And say for sure, like this is for sure turn three, or this is for sure turn five, or this complex here, you know, I can look at helps. Um, exactly. When you're breaking stuff down. Or it's a uh, to, to put a positive spin on it, you could look at where on that corner that you're killing everybody. Oh, too, that's right? true. Yeah. So, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> don't always be, don't always want to be negative. And well, data, I'm right? always bragging <laughs> when I get my trophies. I wait for dra bragging till the end of the day, right? I'm critical to them. <laughs> yeah, but you're true. That's very true. That's very true. Like especially when you, I, mean, I know we'll get to this probably in another video when we're comparing other people's data. You know, sometimes I forget to look at areas that I'm doing really well at. And so I'm only focusing on where I'm not doing well because I want to do better. But there's sometimes where you need, in order to do well in the corner that you did well, you have to look at why. 
Like, oh, yeah. it's because I got a roll off this last corner and I'm flying down the straightaway. If I could do that on another corner, then I could have that same speed there. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah, apply that everywhere. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the interesting thing about maps is some people just really, really love the the, the calculated you know track map where they, they can just uh, – yeah, they they just use this one, right? And then other folks really like the GPS one. So that we really give you the, the two choices. You can use whichever one works for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that one down. But you could also close the the GPS, make the the measures measures graph wider if you have a small monitor. Sometimes the little track map is even better. So uh, GPS track maps or or the calculated track map. It's whichever uh, whichever one works for best for you. But it uh, both of them give you that 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 important piece of, you know, not only what happened, we were faster down, you know, in, in this corner leading onto the, the back straightaway. So now we know what happened, but we also need to know where, right? And the track maps really help that to get us to the third piece, which is just critical, which is the, the pieces we're going to work on in some other videos, which is, you know, why? Was it mid-corner speed? Was it exit? Was it a, was it a, you know, too much G-force on the exit? Was it, did it get loose coming off? You know, the, the why piece is such a, such a big piece of data analysis and if you don't answer the why which you need to know the where in order to get to the why uh, it, the whole exercise becomes um, you know not as valuable so so track maps uh, something everybody needs to understand go uh, we talk about the the track map building in two different videos on youtube like i said and you know go study up on those if you need a little bit more information that's the end of this aim learn fast video leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you want us to cover another topic Visit aimsports.com if you want to learn more about Micron products.